Welcome to the installation video series of the AC coupled energy storage system. This series of videos consists of five chapters, preparation, overview, AC coupled inverter mounting, Ting electrical wiring connection, smiles cloud app operation. Please note that only those who have been properly trained or who demonstrate relevant skills can install and maintain this AC coupled inverter under instructions. Now, let's take a look at the tools that we are going to use. Installation tools we will use our electric drill, wire stripper, wire cutter, network cable crimper, ferro crimper, torque wrench, T20 screwdriver, small Phillips screwdriver, small slotted screwdrivers, and 8mm hex wrench. Personal protective equipment includes helmet, gloves, and protective suit. Other materials include 8 AWG grounding cable, 6 AWG grounding cable, 12 AWG DC cable, 4 Zero DC cable, 4 AWG AC cable, 8 AWG AC cable, 14 AWG AC cable, Conduit plug, RS485 communication cable, Ethernet cable, RJ45 plug, and communication terminals. Then check if any items from the package are missing. There should be a mounting bracket, a quick installation guide, 6M6 expansion screws and sleeves, an M4 screw, a DTS connecting line, a smart meter with two CTs, a DTS, and a battery temperature sensor. Please note that this installation guide applies to the HAS 11.5 LVUSG1 model for the tool preparation for other models. Please refer to the user's manual or quick installation guide. Before we start, let's take a look at the ports on the AC coupled inverter so that you can better understand the installation process. The bottom red button, the rapid shutdown switch, from left to right, there are communication area two battery terminals, grounding bar, and AC terminals. Now, we are ready to go. Please choose the appropriate installation location according to local regulations and actual installation conditions. Please make sure that the AC coupled inverter is installed vertically or is tilted no more than 15 degrees. Leave enough space around the inverter. First. Mark the six drilling spots according to the screw holes on the bracket. Drill holes with an electric drill with a drilling depth no less than 60 millimeters. Then plug and secure the anchors in the holes. Fix the bracket with M6 screws. Please make sure that the bracket is firmly secured to the mounting surface. Next, mount the inverter on the bracket carefully. Tighten the M4 screw to secure the bracket and the inverter. Now, we can move on to electrical wiring. First, loosen, but do not remove the six screws of the box cover with T20 screwdriver. Remove the cover, then unscrew the waterproof plugs from the bottom of the inverter and install the wire conduit on the corresponding ports before connecting. Next, let's start the battery cable connection. First, prepare the battery ground cable and battery cables according to relevant local regulations. Next, use the slotted screwdriver to loosen the screw on the grounding bar, insert the battery ground cable, and tighten the screw. Secondly, use the 8mm hex wrench to unscrew the bolts, insert the battery cables into the terminals, and then tighten the bolts. Gently pull the battery cables and battery ground cable backward to ensure that they are firmly connected. Perform the same process on the negative battery cable. Make sure that the polarity of all connected cables is correct. Now, start the AC wiring. The AC side includes grid connection, generator connection, and EPS connection. Step 1. Grid connection. First, prepare the grid ground cable and grid cables according to relevant local regulations. Then use the slotted screwdriver to loosen the screw on the grounding bar, insert the ground cable, and tighten the screw. Secondly, insert the L1, L2 into the grid port. Gently pull the grid cable and grid ground cable backward to ensure that they are firmly connected. Step 2. Generator and EPS connection. 
Repeat the same process to prepare the generator and EPS ground cable and generator and EPS cables. Then connect them to the corresponding ports of the inverter. Please make sure that all L1, L2, and lines are connected correctly. Now, let's do the communication wiring. There are seven port types in the communication area, a DTS port, two parallel ports, a BMS port, four meter ports, two DI ports, four reserved ports, and two DO ports. Step one, BMS connection. First, prepare the cable according to relevant local regulations. Next, pass the cable through the AC coupled inverter and insert the air J45 plug into the BMS port. Next, we can start the communication wiring on the battery side. Pass the communication cable through the RJ45 waterproof terminal, then connect to the inverter communication port on the battery. Step 2. Smart meter and current transformer connection. Before connecting the meter to the AC coupled inverter, we need to install the meter inside the communication box or distribution box first. Then insert the terminal bars into the corresponding port of the meter. Next, clamp the CT to the L1 and L2 lines. Please check if the CT mounting position is correct. Use the slotted screwdriver to loosen the screws at ports 1, 3, 4, and 6 on the meter, and tighten the screws after inserting the CT1-1 and CT1-2 cables into the ports in turn. The white and blue wires of CT1-1 are connected to terminals 1, 3, and the white and blue wires of CD1-2 are connected to terminals 4, 6. Then, connect the meter to the grid. Please prepare the 12 WGAC cable with tin plating, etc. To comply with local regulations, use the slotted screwdriver to loosen the screws at ports 2, 5, and 10 on the meter, and tighten the screws. After inserting the L1, L2 and cables into the ports, connect the L1, L2 and cables to the grid, and make sure they are correctly connected. Prepare the 22 WGRS485 communication cable, according to relevant local regulations. Next, connect the processed cable to the corresponding port on the meter. Use the slotted screwdriver to loosen the screws on the A and B ports on the meter. Then insert the cables and tighten them. Connect the other end of the cable to the meter port of the AC coupled inverter. Press the button down with the slotted screwdriver to insert the other end of the cable to the meter 485A and meter 485B ports. And then remove the screwdriver. Next we come to the fifth part, the connection of DTS. Remove the DTS port cover with a small Phillips screwdriver. Then insert the DTS into the USB port and tighten the screws. Secondly, insert the L1, L2 and N lines into the grid port. Gently pull the grid cable and grid ground cable back backward to ensure that they are firmly connected. Step 2 Generator and EPS Connection Repeat the same process to prepare the generator and EPS ground cable and generator and EPS cables. Then connect them to the corresponding ports of the inverter. Please make sure that all L1, L2 and lines are connected correctly. Significantly, taking the example of Hoimel's microinverter, a 3 kilowatt PV system is connected to our HMS 1000TT and linked to six PV panels through our cables. These PV panels can be directly connected to any of our AC ports, such as the generator port. Now, we can power on the system. Turn on the switches in order, the battery power switch, and the switch between the inverter and the grid. Rotate the DC switch to on if the inverter is connected to the PV strings. Wait for the for green indicators and the surrounding blue circles to light on. Please note that the length of the surrounding blue lights indicates the amount of energy stored in the battery. You can refer to the user manual to learn more about the status of the lights. 
Once the first communication indicator light of the DTS is on, it means that the DTS is ready for network configuration. Type in the username and password. You can save your password for a quick login next time. Click Login and you will be directed to the Plants page. Click Plus on the upper right and start building your plant. First, you need to fill in the name of your plant and other basic information. Please avoid duplicate plant names. Then select the plant type and enter the capacity of your system. Please note that the plant type cannot be changed once it is created. So please select one that suits your installation situation and the installed capacity. Next, select your time zone. Please make sure you select the right time zone because a wrong one will affect the display of your daily power generation. Then select the location of your plant. You will be automatically located on the map when you give the permission. You can drag and zoom in the map to locate the plant or type in the detailed address. Make sure the information is correct. Then choose your region. You can upload a picture of your plant if you want to add the cover. If everything is all right, click Next and move on to the next step. Click Add Owner and fill in the owner information. Then click Save to complete the owner account creation. You can also select an existing owner or delete the account. Then click Next to add your devices and set the layout. Click Add DTU and add the DTS serial number. The serial number can be entered manually or added by scanning the barcode. Click Next to move on and fill the information as you need. Click Finish to complete this step. Now, we can begin the network configuration. Then click on O and M at the bottom of the page and tap on Network Configuration. Then click Confirm to enter the mobile wireless network connection and turn the Wi-Fi on. Select the DTS wireless network and click Connect. When the connection is successful, tap on Network Configuration again and enter the Network Configuration page. Select your router Wi-Fi and enter your password. Then click on Send to DTU. Tap on Finish to complete the configuration. If you see three solid blue lights on the DTS, it means that the DTS connection is successful. You can also turn on the Inverter Self-Test function on your mobile app to check for potential faults and troubleshooting suggestions. Thanks for watching.